I'm about to show you how you can hit the ball further without having to increase your club head speed. You are gonna be hitting it at least one club further, maybe even two by the end of this video. So you're probably thinking, Giles, how is this even possible? Well, it's all to do with how efficient you are in your strike. So to demonstrate this, I'm about to do two swings for you. You know, I'm measuring everything with the trap man here. It is one of the most accurate radars in the world. We're using range balls. So let me do the first swing for you. This is gonna be the inefficient strike where I early extend and throw my angles out. So now let's slow the swing down, but let's use an efficient strike and let's then look at the data. Okay, so now let's take a look at the data. So we've got swing one over here, swing two over here. Now, what we can see is that swing two was 5.2 miles an hour slower, but the ball speed was 2.6 miles an hour faster. So slower club head speed, but faster ball speed. Why? We had a better smash factor. So the transfer of energy between the club head and the ball was better. And overall, that resulted in a four yard extra carry distance. So what that essentially means is as I was coming into impact, my low point was further past past the golf ball and I was actually having more shaft lean there which compressed it. Now straight away I know the keyboard warriors are going to go well yeah you just de-lofted the club. Well yeah but that's what all good ball strikers do. If you're not doing that then you need to do that. So the first step is we need to learn how to control our mass in order to achieve a good ball then ground contact. I see so many amateurs they set up in this position they hear they're supposed to load into their trail leg so they will be very much on their right leg at the top of the back swing so now from here one of two things are going to happen. They're either going to push off and sort of early extend back to their left side in which case they're not going to be able to rotate so they're going to have to throw their angles out and that's going to cause a lot of inefficient strikes or the second one is they're going to try and generate some sort of angle of attack and that's going to be by swinging over the top in reality we see a lot of golfers or the best players in the world control their mass very very well what do we tend to see on a normal basis? Well, we will see with an iron, the best players in the world will set up ever so slightly more on their lead leg. Now, it doesn't matter if you are a stack and tilt golfer or if you're somebody who likes a big shift off, there will always be a little bit of a momentum starter in your swing where you go from your lead foot to your trail foot. Some golfers might have to feel like they stay on their left side. Other golfers might have to feel a big push. That's a feeling, that's not the fact. Now, from there, what then happens is these good players start to shift back towards the target before they finish their backswing. So at the top of the backswing, they are slight, they're pretty even in their feet or they're slightly more on their left side. And then from there, they continue to shift all the way through. Now, this shifting all the way through allows them to move their low point forward. So we need to give you, or I need to give you a very, very simple drill that's gonna give you direct feedback as to whether you are in a good enough position in the downswing to achieve a ball and ground contact. Okay, so what is this drill? Well, it's the basket drill. One of my favorite drills to do, again, no matter what your sort of swing type is, what your preference is, you can do this and it will match that perfectly. So if I set up to the golf ball right here, I'm gonna put this basket right outside my lead foot and it's about a hand width outside of my leg. Now, what I wanna be seeing is, but oh, that's a little bit out, there we go. Now, what I wanna be seeing is by the time I start down and my arms roughly around left arm parallel, somewhere in this sort of region, um, I want to be able to feel like my lead leg touches that basket. So I can feel it on the outside part of my leg, it touches that basket. If you do not touch that basket, so let's just say you get down to this position and you feel there, that means you do not have a good enough weight shift back to your lead side. So what we want to see, again, presuming you've got it in the right position, is that you start to touch that basket kind of halfway down in your downswing just after your transition. And then from there, that's a great positive direct feedback to tell you, right, your weight's in a good position. Now you can just rotate through. And from there, you are going to achieve a great ball and then ground contact. Let me show you what this looks like. So if I set up to the ball there, good position, you should see me touch that basket in the downswing. So now that we've controlled the low point, now we can start to talk about, okay, how do we actually deliver shaft lean? Now, shaft lean is really a reaction to good movement patterns earlier on. And there are two key things that often get overlooked. Number one, club face, and number two, shaft pitch. So I'm gonna tackle both of these, and I'm gonna start with the shaft pitch position. How do we get that shaft in a correct position, and what are we looking to avoid? So first of all, what are we looking to see as a correct position? Well, if I take it back to left arm parallel in this position, and I was to draw a line down the shaft. When I return back to this left arm parallel position in the downswing, I want to see that that shaft has worked 
into a flatter plane. If it's worked into a flatter plane, that means that club is working in a steep to shallow pattern, and that is gonna get us in the most efficient delivery position possible, assuming we have a good club face position. Now, what do I see a lot of golfers do wrong? Well, first of all, it starts in the backswing. They get very rolly to the inside. Now, from here, whatever we do in the backswing, we often do the opposite in the downswing, and from there, you will see that club wants to topple over the top. From there, you're gonna to have to early extend as a late form of shallowing. You're not gonna be able to get it into a good position. So that's the first issue that I see. The second one is that they have a good top of backswing position, but then they fire very quickly with their upper body. Their right arm might get too keen. And from there, again, they're steepening it, causing that early extension move. So one of my favorite things to do to start with is just to do some left arm only drills. And the reason for this is because what we do with our left forearm is really, really crucial in controlling the pitch of the shaft. So for example, if I just drop the club on the ground, I want you to do this to start with. Put your trail hand behind your back and your lead hand out in front of you. Now, make a backswing where you get your thumb pointing straight up to the sky. From there, I want you to then turn your forearm down in the backswing so the thumb points behind you. So you go thumb to the sky at left arm parallel in the backswing, thumb behind you at left arm parallel in the downswing. If I now do that with the club, again, my thumb's on the shaft, so I go thumb to the sky, thumb behind me you can see this forearm rotation right here is A, gonna get the club steep in this position, and B, is gonna allow it to shallow right there. So once you've done that a couple times, go nice and slow, thumb to the sky, thumb behind me, thumb to the sky, thumb behind me. And you can see how then if I put my right arm on, if I do that same feeling, how actually I'm working a very much a steep to shallow pattern. You see all the best players in the world do. And the reason for it is because it gets the club in the correct position, like I said, to where you can rotate and therefore deliver shaft lean and get some good compression. Now, once you've done that a couple of times, and again, we're focusing on the left arm, you can use a steering wheel analogy where you feel like you're holding a steering wheel in front of you. You turn it to the left in the backswing, to the right in the downswing. You can use something like that. You can use something like the finger pointer drill, which is where you grip the club normally. You take your trail hand index finger, point it down the side of the grip and then feel like it goes to the sky in the backswing and then points behind you in the downswing. So really there are loads of different variations. The key once you've done that is to start slow and start without a ball. So I'm just going to go feeling like I'm nice and steep in this position. So you can see a left arm parallel, my hands are sort of in line with my right armpit, depending on camera angle, shaft is pointing inside the ball and then on the way down it's shallower relative to where it went back and then swing through. So go nice and slow, feel that change in the shaft pitch so it goes steep to shallow. Then from there, I can step on in and hit the first shot nice and slow. So I'll go really nice and slow in this one. I'll go here, steep to shallow. And you can see it's probably gone no more than 110, 120 yards in the air. And again, I'm just feeling that steep to shallow pattern. That's crucial, like I said, gets us in the right delivery position to there where our body can rotate. If we're not in that delivery position, we cannot rotate and therefore we cannot deliver shaft lean and have an efficient strike producing more distance. Now, the final part of this is being able to link up that shaft pitch with the club face. Now, when you look at the best players in the world, you'll always see a similar movement in transition. And that movement is, it doesn't matter if the golfer has cup to their lead wrist, the neutral, even a bowed lead wrist, you will see them work this wrist in into a more bowed position. So they would twist that club away from them. You might have heard sort of the motorbike analogy where you twist the handle away from you in transition. Now, why is this important? This is what allows us to twist that face down to the ground. Now, you can use things like feeling like you bow the left wrist. You can use things like sort of twisting your right palm down to the ground, but actually a really practical sort of analogy that I really, really like. You can even get a buddy to help you with this. Is imagine I go to the top of the backswing. From there, imagine somebody's just put their finger right on the center of the club face. Now, what I want you to do is if your club face was open and you started down, your finger would slip straight off that club face. So what you're gonna to need to feel like you do is twist this face so it points down to the ground and hooks that finger onto that club face. If I do that with two hands on the club, imagine somebody's fingers on that club face right there and I had trying to hook it down. You see how it closes that club face down? Now again, I'm over exaggerating this massively, but from there, remember back at the start, if you wanna deliver sharply and hit the ball further with the same club head speed, you need to have a closed club face in order to allow for that shaft lane, which is an opener to happen. So by going to the top and feeling like you can hook somebody's finger down, you will be able to go, okay, does it feel like it's your left 
wrist that's doing it, your left forearm, or does it feel like your right forearm is sort of spinning downwards as that shaft shallows? Because again, it can be quite complicated sometimes. You're talking about all these little itty gritty sort of movements versus if I just say, right, imagine somebody's fingers on the club face, you're gonna have to twist that club face down in order to keep that finger on there. You don't want it to slide off. So if I go to the top and I do that feeling, twist it down, great, club face is in a good position. Actually, look here, I've just thought about twisting it. I'm already preset to deliver a huge amount of shaft length. Now, all of these are gonna lead to a far more efficient strike. Like I showed you at the start of the lesson, if you can have an efficient strike, you can hit it further than people who have a faster clubbing speed. Now, if you have enjoyed today's lesson, please give the video a like and subscribe. And if you want a little bit more one-to-one -one help, I offer online coaching no matter where you are in the world the link is down below check it out it's all done on the skillist app and i would love to help you with your game